Hello Floss Tube, my name is Deb. I am the Traveling Stocking Stitcher. Today's episode is X Marks the Cross Stitch because it's September 19th and that is International Talk Like a Pirate Day. Arr. So today there be pirates here. Um, dressed for the occasion, although there is kind of a fine line I've found between pirate and French mime and federal penitentiary inmate. So. I was going for pirate, in case you didn't know. And you know, we're coming into fall. Pirates are about as close as I get to Halloween. I don't like spooky, scary, scary, gory, morbid things. And so pirates are as close as I can get. So uh, a couple years ago, I was at a garage sale and happened to run across a pamphlet from Sue Hillis Designs. And she has made the link between pirates and Christmas. I didn't start this. This was on her. Um, so uh, I didn't know I wanted pirate Christmas stockings, didn't know I needed pirate Christmas stockings. Um, but we started off with her design and here it is. Yo ho ho ho! It's a Santa Christmas pirate. So here he is. He's got the candy cane peg leg. He's had all little charms as well, which were kind of cool. And my favorite part of the whole thing is he has ripped the Christmas tree out by his roots. So uh, I picked it up not thinking I was going to use this or had a need for it or whatever and then I'd gotten done doing some I think one of the, the Celtic lady fancy ladies and you know it was kind of needed kind of a palette cleanse or something quick and easy. These are small designs this is only like intended to be in a five by seven frame so I thought I can do some cute little tiny um, some small stockings and do that. So. So here we go. What I did, first of all, when I when I first started this, I, I thought, uh, I, I know one thing I wanted to do was uh, I wanted it to look like an old treasure map. Some I wanted the, the fabric to be distressed and you know, looking old and piratey you know, kind of look. So I did my first tea dyeing thing and I took, I dipped it in the tea and uh, then wanted a little more color so I was rubbing coffee grounds around in it and and uh, I even put it in the oven and baked it for a while and was hoping to get you know kind of even scorch marks on it and my husband kind of said well you know I can go out in the garage and get you some oily rags if you'd like um, which thrilled me because it's like that's exactly the look I was going for I guess I've achieved it um, and quite frankly I would have put an open flame to it to get some burn marks on it if I didn't think it would have you know, affected the integrity of the fabric or burned the house down, but um, but I'm kind of pleased with how the fabric look turned out. Um, and so I needed a Christmas name. Um, we started out with Yo Ho Ho Ho, and I needed a, a name for the stocking because it's got to be a person's name. So I thought Jolly Roger. Jolly, kind of a Christmas thing. And you've got Have a Holly Jolly Christmas, so why not put them together and call it Holly Jolly Roger. So, here's what I did. I've got, I started at the top, I put Holly Jolly Roger, and I created a little Jolly Roger flag with a, a jolly looking skeleton or Jolly Roger thing. And he's got a little uh, sprig of holly under his neck there to make him drive that home. And there, Holly Jolly Roger. And as it was going along, uh, it dawned on me, and I can't take credit for this, I saw a cartoon that showed all the stockings for pirates lined up on the fireplace, and there was, you know, Captain Hook and Bluebeard, and down at the end you see Peg Leg Pete. So, I made him into a Peg Leg stocking, like this. And the other thing I did is, yo ho ho ho, and a bottle of rum. Pa pum pum. A little little drummer boy thing, so got it all going on there. So you can sort of see how some of this uh, distressing happened on the, the fabric, and there's a cute little old Santa. So, stocking number one with pirates. You would think it would end there, right? Yeah. Next up, Sue Hillis has a Shiver Me Timbers, our Shiver Me Timbers design. 
with a snowman, a pirate snowman on it. And of course, in my head, when I look at these things, it's shaped like an L. Perfect stocking material. I could not make it into a stocking. Um, so, uh, this guy, I started stitching. And this was another one that, you know, as I'm stitching, I'm thinking about these things, and sometimes the creative process just happens while I'm stitching. Didn't intend to almost the very end to do this, but this guy ended up being a boot. Let's see, got that on there. All right, so here's Shiver Me Timber. I didn't put the R on there. I was gonna try to do like burr, but I didn't quite think it ended up the same. And I named him Long John Silver Bells. Yeah, there he is. Give him a close-up look. I didn't have a charm for this one because it didn't come with the thing. But I put a little heel on there and the toe is not rounded out very well. But I said the design only goes really up to here, and then I decided to do a row of of bells. They have some silver crinic in there and and then I did only to hear this, the, like, the last two were on here. And then I started thinking about the fact, well, what does a pirate boot look like? So I Googled it. Now, can we just take a moment to marvel at the miracle that is the Internet? Now, not that long ago, within my living memory, you couldn't just summon up anything at all, anything you could think of, type it into Google, and have this treasure trove of information come back within seconds, within seconds, literally into the palm of your hand. Um, so I did that. Google pirate boots, and there were all kinds of pirate boots. So this, you know, they've got kind of the, the slouchy top and the folded over cuff and little heel, and that is my Long John Silver Bells. Again, I wanted these to be fairly short, about 13 inches, and they're about the same height. And so that's what I was going for. Now I had a little, I backed this one with something I have not used before. It almost looks like a velvet, but I think it sounded like a micro velvet, which I've heard Rogue Mama Stitcher talk about before. And she uses it a lot. And it, like I said, it, I don't know if this will even show up very well, but it, it looks like a um, velvet. But when I stitched it, it kind of stuck out the edges, edges a little bit. That's why there's this string hanging out here. String hanging out here. So, yeah, it was showing around the edges, and I wasn't happy with that. So what I did is I just basted it in. That's going to be really hard to see because it's black on black. I just basted it in a string, but you can see the string hanging out here. And whoop! Just kind of zip that up and gave it a little pouch look. So, and again, you've got this kind of, that's how pirate book, book um, that's how pirate boots look because I saw it on the internet. So things have gotten a little out of hand or out of hook, shall we say. Now, if only I could find some sort of Captain Hook Christmas hook to hold these things up with, then that would be cool. Anybody have a lead on any of that? Let me know. So the lettering on some of these, I took, you know, the Sue Hillis designs, and she has a very specific kind of lettering here. And so I was able to look at those letters and kind of extrapolate. And I did have to chart these out because, you know, you have to figure out how long it is to center it up and everything. So here I just took a piece of graph paper and kind of figured out how to do it. And counted up how many there were and how many spaces were between and that kind of stuff. So sometimes I'll do it in software like Stitch Fiddle, other times I'll just take a piece of paper because that's easier. All right, so you think I'd be done then? Mm, no. Uh, next one I came up with was, and this one I, I wanted to have done to show you today, but I was having trouble with it and I've learned to trust the creative process takes time. And so I didn't want to rush it. I didn't want to do something I wasn't happy with. Um, so I was going to do a parrot. So here's Polly. And Polly is a pirate. Uh, a, pirate a pirate parrot. And she is from 
uh, Owl and Thread Shop on Etsy. And they had a series. They had, and these were meant to be like magnets. So there was the parrot, there was the, um, uh, there's a pirate ship, there's a treasure chest, and there's a crossed sabers thing in addition. So there's, there's four of them. And so, you know, they may work their way into another pirate stocking at some point. But so far, I've just used the parrot. So Polly, well, it's not a Christmas thing. And, but Polly wants a Christmas cracker. And there it is. I found a Christmas cracker as a freebie design on the DMC website. And it even uses some etoile in, well, it uses a lot of etoile in the uh, cracker part of the thing. Um, so, you know, I've not seen a lot of, I don't think I've run into any design that called for a twall. I've never used it before. And the thing is, it's, it's like stitching with regular floss. It's not as futzy as, as Krynik. So if you're trying to incorporate some bling, and they sell it at Michael's, they don't have like every color, but they've got enough to do the job. And so, yeah, so I would be using that again without a whole lot of effort. It gives you a little bit of sparkle. And I did use, uh, I think, uh, yeah, um, petite treasure braid on the gold and the silver things there. Polly's going to be a stocking, and I thought on this one, well, Polly's a bird, and they don't have feet like us, they have bird feet. So I'm trying to figure out how to do, and you probably see that I basted it in here. Let me show you how I went about doing this. I took a piece of paper towel, just fold it in half, and kind of started, you know, drawing an outline and unfolded it and said, you know, that sort of looks like a pirate foot. And this is what, actually I think this is my husband's version, because I was struggling with it and he came up with one. And he said, you also need claws. So he kind of had little, uh, little claws. And I think what I'll do is just take a piece of felt and kind of put a little pointy fingernail kind of down on each one of those. So that was kind of my plan. And I did, you know, I tried this, that didn't look like quite right, and I tried, you know, this is my first attempt, I think, where it didn't look right either, and tried to make it a little more talon-like. That one's not working out for me. So, and then here's one more that, again, tried to do the, the talon feet, and just not working. But I did baste in ahead of time before I stitched it, I based in, you can see the far outline way over here, and it got real long. Well, the thing is, is when I pulled this paper out that I wanted, or this fabric out that I wanted to use, I'd gotten it at a garage sale and somebody had cut out the corner of it. And I knew I wanted to be fairly short anyway, but it kind of made me panic a little bit, and so I moved things up. I was going to say, Polly, you know, wants a Christmas cracker all in a line so I could make a thin, long parrot leg. And then when I worried about not having enough room, I kind of doubled it up. And my thinking was, and I rebasted some stuff here, thinking, okay, maybe I'll give him like a parrot knee. And it comes out here, and it goes down there. And then here I tried to do, again, sort of a leg that kind of incorporates the, the Christmas cracker, which is kind of cool. And, but then I was really having trouble with the middle, the middle leg. So that's where I had to leave it. Anybody's got any really brilliant ideas of what that should look like? I'm struggling with it, so. so I'll show you when I get them done. Oh, Christmas crackers, by the way. If you don't know what Christmas crackers are, um, in the UK and the Commonwealth countries, they do these things, and they, they're paper, um, like uh, tissue paper kind of things, and there's goodies wrapped inside. It's kind of like a Cracker Jack thing, and you pull it apart, and it's actually got like a, a noisemaker, like... A, um, pop guns kind of thing. Makes a little noise and pff, as you do it. So that's what a Christmas cracker is. So there's Polly. If you just happen to be looking for, for parrot designs, um, Abby Sue Designs on her Facebook page is working on some um, that are based on, she does a lot of Disney kinds of things and she's got a tiki room. There's a, apparently an a animatronic tiki room adventure, no, what is it called? Enchanted Tiki Room uh, at Disneyland. And it's got a lot of parrots and animatronic parrots. Um, and I don't think she's got them out yet, but she was showing them on her Facebook page. So they're very, very cute. I like parrots. That's why I happen to have 
parrot hanging around the house. I didn't get him just for the thing. I've had him for years. So, you know, another thought is if you got a kid who thinks it's not cool to have a cross-stitch stocking lovingly crafted by grandma or mom, make him a Christmas stocking that has a pirate on it. That'll show him. Yeah. All right. Am I done with pirates? Well, I got a couple more. But these are more in the conceptual, um, kind of like the cocktail napkin kind of conceptual phase, although there were no cocktails or napkins involved in the process. But um, So they're just kind of things I've been noodling on. Uh, so if this time next year, International Talk Like Pirate Day shows up again, and I still feel like making floss tubes, and I still feel like stitching pirates, you might see a few more. Um, what I'm thinking about doing is another Sue Hillis design called Pirates Love Christmas. Uh, it kind of looks like this, and it's got some candy canes. I thought I would take the, the hooks off the candy canes, and so it just says X, and then say something about, you know, X marks the spot to put my loot to my treasure, Santa, yes, scallywag, you know, something like that. Um, so, and, and then for a name, I was thinking, uh, Ye Merry Gentlemen, because sounds like something a pirate would say. So that's going to be his name. So That's uh, one idea that I've got. And for the shape of it, you know, uh, I was thinking about doing like just a, a skeleton foot. Not sure at all how that's going to work. Um, you know, just kind of the, the skeleton foot and then a tibia bone. Yeah, it's going to be pretty skinny if I do it right. But then there's going to be no room for the, the pirate, so it's going to need a little more a little more thought process. I do have one more idea for a pirate Christmas stocking. What kind of stockings do pirates wear? Argyle! It needs some work. I, like I said, that's the concept part. Sue Hillis also has a tools of the trade that has a lot of pirate paraphernalia. You know, it's got the, the spyglass and the um, X with a lot of, you know, family circus kind of trail thrown around. Uh, thing that you'd see on a pirate map, a pirate treasure map, and uh, treasure and gold doubloons and what have you. Um, so that's a cool one uh, that you might want to look at. Doreen Jones also has a lot of cute um, pirate kinds of things, so you might want to think about that. So uh, seal of approval. I always do something that ties in with a the theme, and you know, surprisingly, there are not a lot of pirate floss tubes out there. I don't know why not. Um, but I did just happen to run into a new one, a brand new floss tuber. She's just got her first floss tube up. And I looked at her website and she does have a pirate. She didn't show it in her video, but she does have a, a cat pirate um, design. And she's uh, Meridian Designs is the name of her company. Um, and she does the designs for these things. And normally I'm not a big fan of, of floss tubes that are, you know, people that are selling you things. Um, but if it's the designer and they're talking through the creative process like she was, um, and you know, you know, you can tell it came from a love of the craft and the designing of, you know, she got very creative ideas and things. She does a series of bikinis that have all kinds of different themes. That you know, she has a turkey one for Thanksgiving and a peacock one and uh, firecracker ones for the 4th of July and so those are you know kind of cute as well so so I really appreciated the the creativity behind it and besides she was hilarious I thought she was very funny and personable and entertaining so um, give her love it's Karen from Meridian Designs is is the the video so like I said she's brand new just coming out with one so give her a watch let's move on away from pirates and show you what I've been working on my last couple of videos, I had an angel for a theme, um, and I showed you Garden Angel that I was working on. This is from Serendipity Designs. This is going to be my stocking for me. And I've made some more progress. This is what it looked like before, and then this is what it looks like now. So I've got a little bit more in there. I'm working up to, this is going to be kind of the neckline up here, and her face is going to be somewhere up here. I've got some hands. I was going to do one over one. Uh, this is 32 count fabric, and I was going to do one over one with the hands. And I started looking at it. It was just going to look sloppy and messy. And, you know, it's small enough that I don't think it matters all that much, and there's not that much skin. Although there is a lot of neck and face to her. So I'm not sure. I just, I just, it wasn't looking good, and 
this is fine. I don't need to do that kind of thing. So that's her. That's where she's at. Just to follow up, um, my last video, uh, last two videos actually, I did an angel theme. And uh, I wanted to follow up on, on a couple of those things. Um, I talked also about Stitchy Wendy, who is a new floss tuber, just did her first video about a month ago. And she showed some of the, the angel ornaments that are available um, on the Told in a Garden website, which is from the designer of the lavender and lace, the Celtic ladies, and all the pretty things, all the angel uh, things. Um, and um, she had done angel ornament freebies um, from like 1996, I think it is, through 2005. And so all those freebie angels are still out there, and they're very, very beautiful, very cute. Um, and they're designed to be ornaments, so I thought you might be interested in seeing that. Stitchy Wendy showed a few of those uh, on her first video. And then she also um, has a new video out. And she was nice enough to give me a very nice shout out on there. So I appreciate Wendy uh, you doing that. She's got some really cool finishes. She's been finishing up a storm. So um, go see very cute and kind of unusual different finishes uh, that I think you'll enjoy. Really, really some beautiful stitching. And so I think you, you would appreciate Stitchy Wendy. So watch her. Um, and since she shouted me out, you know the policy around here. If you shout me out, I put you in the shout out playlist. So at the end of my video, I want it to be easy for you to get to see these people. So there'll be a, a link, a card or whatever they call them, an end card, um, where you can just click on that. It'll show you a playlist of all the people that have been kind enough to mention me. So if you like me, you'll probably like them. Uh, another thank you that I have to do is uh, a shout out that I got from Kitchy Whips. Kitchy Whips is like just the coolest floss tuber on the planet. She's fairly new. She's only got, you know, been doing this for a couple of months. Um, but she's she's just hilarious. She's just, she's a laugh riot. You know, she really is very entertaining. And she's doing, she's starting to do some big full coverage kinds of things. She's done some mermaids and, and mirabilias and, and really cool pretty stuff. So please, please try Kitchy Whips as well. And thank you for that. And she will be in the shout out playlist at the end there. So give those guys a try. But what else have I been working on? Now, you know, normally I am a monogamous stitcher, but when I do these episodes, I kind of say, oh, well, I gotta drop everything and go work on a couple of pirate pieces. And then I do that and I get sidelined and I forget about the garden angel that I'm working on and I go do some other kind of thing that's gotten me distracted in the meantime. So if I'm working on something, I'll work on it to the end. But if I take a side tour, then who knows where I'm gonna end up. So I have detoured a little bit. So in my last video, um, I showed you my method for dealing with um, Krynic and DMC blends, and I actually took a snippet of that and made it a separate tutorial as a, a floss tube extra, so if you wanted to check that out individually, you could, could see that. And so I got all crazy with myself, and I thought, let's just do an entire an entire design of all Krynic DMC blends. I know. Did you see the pirates? I'm, I'm, something's not right with me. And, and not a small one. This thing's, you know good sized. Uh, it's going to fit in an 11 by 14 frame. And uh, so I decided to do this. And it is from Mary Hickmont. Let me put my glasses on make sure I got that right. Mary Hickmont Designs. She has a shop on Etsy. And um, so not only is every single stitch on this a blend of Krynic and TMC, but it's also done on black. It is a um, the the north transept window or rose window uh, and the north transept of the Reims Cathedral in France, which I went to 40 some years ago. Uh, well, no, not 40 some, almost 40. Let's clear that up. Um, when I was in college, and then, actually when I was very, very young. It's um, in the Champagne region of France and it is where most of the, the French kings were had their coronations. And it's beautiful. It was, I thought it was much prettier even than, than Notre Dame, which gets all the, the press. But, not that there's anything wrong with Notre Dame, but um, I just thought that Reims Cathedral, if you ever get a chance, is just stunning. Um, and so this is what I started so far. And here it is. And it is all sparkly. It's uh, on 16 count black Ada. There aren't any fractional stitches or anything, they're full stitches. So, I don't know if I can get some some shine on there for you a little bit. Get you a little bit of a 
Sometimes if you do the angle, it kind of looks better. So, there that is. I think this is going to be one where, you know, maybe a stitch a day, if I can confine myself. I have a hard time stopping. Um, so, but maybe, or not a stitch a day, but a, a, a strand of floss a day um, might be a way to go with handling that one. So, you may see that one progress slowly for a while. And then I do have one other whip that elbowed things out of the way. Um, with the passing of Queen Elizabeth, I decided that I wanted to do a piece to commemorate her life. And I've had this around for a long time, thinking this is one that I'm going to start next time I do something. Next time I do something. Next time. It just keeps getting shoved out of the way. And so, no time like the present. I figured this would be an appropriate one. And Mystic Stitch is a company that recently has uh, become defunct. They are no longer in existence, which is unfortunate because they have a lot of cool things that I'm glad I bought this one I did. Um, and uh, I've got a few others of theirs, and I wish I had some of the others that I was looking for, so I'm keeping an eye open on Etsy for those. So this is uh, London, and it's got uh, the Westminster Abbey here where they will be holding the funeral for Queen Elizabeth. And this is what I've got so far. A lot of confetti on this guy, which I'm not a real big confetti person. But, um, yeah. You can see the clock taking form there. It's starting to emerge out of the, the tower. And as I was, you know, curious about the, the clock, I started Googling again and found out that the clock was uh, designed in, like, 1758 or something like that. And it's only got, the interesting fact here is it's only got a single hand. It's a single-handed clock. And so I tried to figure out how would you even read a single-handed clock. And it's got something to do with, you know, it's got 12 numbers on it like you expect, but they're split up in five increments or something like that. They've got like 144 dots around or, you know, segments around that. So based on you can figure out the minutes. Uh, I don't know. I was an English major. I don't. I don't do math. But I'm also guessing that you know, maybe in the 17th century, just knowing that it was between one and two o'clock is good enough. You know, it's, it's you know, the 18th century. It's not like you have to like catch a bus, uh, you know, or be home to watch a certain TV show or anything. You know, do they really have a lot of occasion to say, well, I'll be there at 1:17? So. Maybe that's it. Um, and then finally, the last thing I have to show you is a finish. Not a full finish, because I'm still looking. I'm, I'm going to put this in. I want it to, to find a gold, kind of ornate, kind of green, or uh, gold ornate 8x8 eight eight frame. I'm still hunting around for it. Because I'll know it when I see it. But I've done my first shadow line complete. I showed you this earlier. But there it all is with all the beading in there and stuff. And it's just very, well, I'm going to show you angle. Oh, isn't that lovely? Just beautiful. Spin it around here. Now I was thinking of doing, this is Mini Mystery Mandala 03. And it's, again, small. I think it's six and a half by six and a half square. And so I'm thinking my next video, um, because I'm by no means an expert, but I am an expert at doing one of the smallest chatelaines that there are, which I started out slowly to do. And, you know, you gather information and research and learn a lot about projects. And I've seen bits and pieces of things that people put in their videos, but I think I'm going to maybe do one that kind of has, you know, questions like, do I have to be paranoid about how many, if I drop, a bead or two, am I not going to have enough beads left over? You know, I'll show you how many beads that I had when I was done and, and those kinds of questions. Um, uh, I had some questions on Facebook. Can I do it on Ada? Can I, you know, what can I do? So I'm going to, you know, put together, I've put together a number of ideas on that one. So you might be seeing that in my next video. Then. That's all I have today. So, arr, be seeing ya. Bye. You, you gotta talk like that the rest of the day, you know. You do. Because it's International Talk Like Pirate Day. Did I tell you about the origin of International Pirate Day? I don't think I did. Um, so a couple of guys were goofing around and talking like pirates, 
and they decided to make a holiday out of it. And um, it's all, it's also like non-copyrighted, so anybody has used to it and stuff. So YouTube, I'm, I'm cool with that. And they got out in, in touch with um, Dave Barry, who is a syndicated columnist, writes for like Miami Herald, I think it is. And he promoted it and made it into a sensation. And now you see things on like the Google page will have the International Talk Like a Pirate thing on it today, probably. They've done it in the past, so. So get your pirate on. Thanks for joining me. Good to see you again. Uh, you know, like, subscribe if you feel like it. Thanks. Bye-bye.